When you brief an approach plate like this ILS into Tallulah, one of the things you look for is that you have the current chart. You can read that off the effective dates on the sides. This one is effective until January 23rd, 2025. There are a few other dates on this plate that may not make as much sense at first glance though. On the bottom left, there's an amendment date. This is Amendment 1 and is dated October 5, 2023, about a year and a half before this current plate was effective. This means that the plate we're looking at isn't the original one when the procedure was designed. It went through an amendment and we're looking at the product of that. On the top right, we have an even stranger number string. You might recognize this if you have a coding background or perhaps from the military. It's called a Julian date and counts the days in order from January 1. October 5th was the 278th day of this year. It doesn't really matter to know about Julian dates. It could be the star date on here for all we care, but just know that it aligns with the amendment date on the bottom left. The Jeppesen version of this approach plate has a similar note. It tells us that this is Terps Amendment 1, effective October 5th, 2023. Terps is the US standard for terminal procedures and controls these amendments. Let's dig in a little to see what exactly got changed. It might be helpful if we shot this approach some years ago and want to know specifically what's new. This is the FAA Instrument Flight Procedure Gateway. It has some details about how approaches have changed over time. It's by no means necessary to look for for your day-to-day -day IFR flying and is way out of scope of any checkride, but it's there to satisfy your curiosity. If we look up this airport, we see all the procedures listed out. There's a tab for Documents, which contains the documents of the actual amendments themselves and we see Amendment 1 for the approach we're looking at, the ILS to Runway 36. On the first page, we see in the headings some familiar numbers. This is Amendment 1 and is effective October 5. Looking back at the approach plate, we see that these match up with what we saw in both the FAA and Jeppesen plates, so that's where these numbers come from. This document lists out all the elements of this procedure which feed into the approach plate, and on the next page, we see the changes from the last, original plate. They're pretty numerous, but let's just look at a few to see how the procedure has evolved. One change was to add a feeder route from the Hey Dud fix to the initial approach fix, the TKH NDB. Let's look at the original approach plate. Notice this approach was good up until August 2021. It's expired. And the date on the bottom left says that it's the original issuance from September 15th, 2016. There's no feeder route from Haydud on this original plate. Let's overlay it here to show how the approach is evolving from the original to the amended one. Next, we look at these changes. Two notes are being added to the plan view, specifying that the procedure is not allowed for arrivals at Haydud and Barn coming certain directions on certain airways. So let's add that too. And what you get when you add all these changes is the plate in its current form, as we looked at before. Hopefully, this little exercise demystifies both what these figures mean on the approach plate and how you can trace back actual changes that get made to approaches from time to time. If you want to be the smartest, safest pilot out there, you need to train with Flight Insight Ground Schools. Not only are we the largest ground school on YouTube, we're also the newest. So pilots have been flocking to us for training. Get started today by visiting us at the link here and in the description.